Good morning. My name is Hendrik Sebastian Krieg, and I'll be doing the introduction to our report today. Our group decided to analyze Vodacom, and in terms of the analysis we'll be doing is King 3, the King 3's principles on corporate governance. All the information included in, in our report and in this presentation was taken from the 2015 integrated report from Vodacom, as well as the King 3 principles. We decided that we will identify and analyze four of the nine principles included in, in the King 3 principles, namely ethical leadership, risk management, the audit committee, and shareholder relations. The focus of our conclusion and of this entire slideshow is to identify whether there is compliance or non-compliance regarding the King 3 principles. We will aim to identify areas that require improvement or whether there has been adequate internal controls implemented or whether they also need improvement. There is, however, a limited scope to the information that we have received and that the Vodacom has included in the integrated report, and we suggest that they might need to maintain effective and current market information. So why did we choose the King 3, and why is King 3 actually here? It is to ensure that there is a positive impact of the company and that it impacts the company in a positive manner, to outline the position of the company's composition or its operations, and to enhance the positives and to eradicate the negatives of the company. I'm Kelsey Hill, and today we're going to be discussing the ethical leadership of a company. Management will have to review the corporate values that drive the ethical behavior and actions of a company. If the company maintains a high ethical standard upon which leadership is based, they'll ensure an ethical relationship between themselves and the environment in which it operates and interacts with. Upon investigation into the principles as prescribed by King 3, the board of directors of Vodacom were found to comply with uh, forming an ethical leadership based on an ethical foundation. The board maintained and ensured this compliance by accepting responsibility for the implementation of ethical values and structures to safeguard and conduct the company. As found in the integrated report of 2015 of Vodacom, it showed that steps were taken to uphold the um, impact that the company had on the economy, environment, and society in which it interacted with. Furthermore, compliance was reached with the second element by ensuring that Vodacom is viewed as a co responsible corporate citizen. This compliance was ensured by the formation of a social and ethics committee as prescribed by the Companies Act. This committee is established to oversee the activities of the entity and ensure that all business activities are aligned with the ethical standards as set in the company. The board of this committee has um, an appropriate composition that allows for the sufficient and effective judgments of the ethical values in the company and to ensure that these values are adhered to and followed. During the 2015 financial year, this committee mainly focused on the reputation drivers and the social impact that the company had. Reputation drivers meaning how the company is viewed in the eyes of the public. Vodacom achieved compliance with the final element by ensuring that their ethics were managed effectively. This compliance was reached through, as mentioned previously, the formation of the Social and Ethics Committee. This committee ensured that they met four times during the year to review their duties that were assigned to them as well as ensuring that the tr business transactions that happened during the 2015 financial year were in fact aligned with the ethics to make sure they were managed and followed. This committee reviewed all of their assigned duties and ensured the compliance was reached. Good morning, my name is Wayne Aiken and I'll be doing the risk management structure of Vodacom. According to King, the board of the company is responsible for the governance of risk. A policy and plan for the risk management should be implemented. Management and the board should review the risks and the risk policies annually. Risk tolerance should be determined annually by the board. The board must set limits to such risks and the board should delegate the responsibility of the risk management to management. The Vodacom Group has a broad oversight and government structure. The risk structure is divided into the following three categories. The Audit, Risk and Compliance Committee, the Group Risk Management Committee and the Subsidiary Risk Management Committee. The Board reviews the critical and strategic risk regularly and is also responsible for approving the Group's risk appetite yearly. The Audit, Risk and Compliance Committee is solely responsible for monitoring all risk management functions and processes 
as well as assessing the significant risks facing the group. The, G the Group Risk Management Committee is also responsible for managing risk and implementing appropriate risk controls. The current Chief Risk Officer is Johan van Krop. He also chairs the Group Risk Management Committee. The GRMC also oversees and monitors the structures that are in place for monitoring or specifically identified risks. The Group Board follows the following risk process. One, they define the risks. Then they have to assess the impact of each risk and assess the likelihood of each risk. They after they classify the risk into either high, medium or low um, occurrence and then they treat the risk and afterwards they monitor and report on the risk. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Claudia Tavares. In terms of risk management, Bodacom has complied and has not complied with several uh, King Code requirements. In terms of non-compliances, the board was not responsible for governance of risks. This is due as the line management was responsible for managing and not the, the board. We uh, recommend that the board should directly be involved in overseeing the risks of the, the company. Another uh, non-compliance is that the risk committee did not assist the board in carrying out its uh, risk responsibilities. This is due to only uh, executive members were on the board namely the, the Chief Risk, uh, Risk Officer, the Group Executive Committee members and the Senior Managing Members. We recommend that no member of um, the Senior Management should be a member of the Risk Committee. Another non-compliance is that the Risk Committee should be chaired by independent non-executive uh, director. This, is, um, this non-compliance is, is due as the the, the committee was chaired by a chief financial officer who is neither independent nor non-executive. We recommend that the chairman should be non-executive and independent. Another non-compliance is that the board did not ensure methodologies in order to anticipate unpredictable risks. This is true as risks are identified on based on the, the likelihood of them occurring. The board should rather ensure that there are methodologies in place in order to um, anticipate these unpredictable risks. Another non-compliance is that the board uh, didn't receive assurance regarding the effectiveness of the risk uh, management process. Management refused, uh, reviews all um, high risks uh, to determine which of these risks need additional treatment. However, the board, the board did not receive assurance regarding the risk management process. We recommend that the board should ensure effective and continual monitoring of risk and management um, that takes place. Vodacom has complied with the requirements of the King Code. The board did determine the risks, of, uh, did determine the levels of risk tolerance. The board did delegate to management the responsibility to implement and monitor risk management plan. The board did ensure that the risk assessments are performed on a continual basis. The board did ensure that management considers and implements appropriate risk responses. The board ensures, uh, did ensure in, uh, in continual risk monitoring by management. And the board did ensure that there are processes in place in order to disclose uh, these risks to relevant stakeholders. Good morning, my name is Pablo Talbot. I'm going to be talking to you about the audit committee. The audit committee is set up to ensure that combined assurance is achieved. They do this by, by ensuring that integrated reporting occurs. The audit committee is made up of or is elected at an AGM at the, each year and should be changed or is rotated or the members of the audit committee are rotated yearly usually. Um, it is essential that in the audit committee all the, all the committee members have the relevant knowledge and skill to do their roles and duties. With finalising integrated reporting, it is essential that the committee members ensure that the, financial, the uh, integrated report is both done with integrity, internal financial controls are adequate, and they identify and manage financial risks. Vodacom's Audit Committee. Vodacom's com Audit Committee have both compliance and non-compliance. The non-compliance start off with that the committee, met, the committee did not state that they met at least twice a year and with both internal and external auditors. The company has also got an issue that they have got three committees that are grouped into one, namely the risk, 
the audit and the compliance. The issue, is this, the issue with this is that the King 3 clearly states that independence must occur, and with three committees and one, we, don't have, we, don't, we can't achieve that. Also, there's no chief audit executive. A chief audit, audit executive is essential in that he ensures that both internal and external auditing goes swiftly. By doing this, he makes sure that there are objectives that are stated and that there are objectives that we met. Then, there's no mention made of a committee charter. The committee charter has to talk about the finance function and is, as well as what they're going to do both with internal and external auditing. Unfortunately, we don't have any proof of this, so we don't know that they have done everything they set out to achieve. Now we can talk about Vodacom's good points. Firstly, Vodacom's, uh, committee, Vodacom's audit committee was structured properly in that there was independent non-executive directors um, that made up the committee. Combined assurance was achieved. We know this because Ernst and, Young, Ernst and Young were appointed to approve that that was the case. And then we also know that PwC was appointed by the Ethics Committee to do the external audit. Lastly, a report was given by the directors, uh, by the uh, committee to the directors to state that they had fulfilled their responsibilities. However, I take you back to the last slide where I did say that there was no charter to compare this to. So we don't, un we don't fully un know if they did complete everything that they set out to achieve or if this was just, you know, just stated. But yeah, other than that, I think Vodacom's audit committee complied fully with most of the, with most of the King 3 principles and there are a few things that they can work on but otherwise they have complied well in the audit committee. I'm Erin DeHart and we're going to be dealing with stakeholder relationships. Firstly, to look at the need for good stakeholder relationships within a company. Stakeholders hold a lot of control within a company and it is therefore necessary to maintain good relationships in order to have good decision making. Good stakeholder relationships also result in good governance within a company. And lastly, it is the board's responsibility to manage these stakeholder relationships. Looking at the, the stakeholder relationships within Vodacom, Vodacom believes that the key to sustaining business is to maintain good stakeholder relationships. Vodacom has many different kinds of stakeholders. For example, they have customers, employees, government, investors, amongst others. Lastly, looking at compliance with King 3 with regard to stakeholder relationships within Vodacom. Vodacom has reached full compliance with regards to the requirements of King 3 in that the board believes that all stakeholder perceptions affect the group's reputation. The board has delegated the responsibility of maintaining stakeholder relationships to management. The interests of all stakeholders have been taken into account. The board strives to achieve the appropriate balance between all its various stakeholders. There is effective communication between the board and all its stakeholders. And lastly, all disputes are managed effectively and efficiently. In concluding, we will readdress or revisit all four of the principles. In terms of ethical leadership, full compliance has been achieved based on all the information that has been provided by the relevant integrated report. There's no evidence of any non-compliance and Vodacom can be seen as a responsible corporate citizen and the company is indeed aligned to all its ethical standards. In regards to risk management, it is clear that the board assumes responsibility for its risk management and ensures that plans are established and really tries hard to achieve risk governance. However, there are a few points of non-compliance. The way that Vodacom monitors its risk that are taken with a determined risk tolerance by quantifying and qualifying the value and the nature of risks by following a prescribed risk, um, risk assessment process is not really sufficient and does actually indicate non-compliance. The prescription that the risk and audit committee should, be, should assist the board in carrying out all of its fundamental tasks and its responsibilities and should, as its members have non-executive and independent members, this specific requirement of King 3 is not met in this integrated report and actually constitutes a non-compliance. Then lastly, is that only executive members on the board, namely the CRO, should be on the audit committee. However, in our case, it is not chaired by an independent non-executive director as it is chaired by the fin chief financial officer in Vodacom's case. It is also very important that the, chief, that the risk um, management principle ensures that frameworks and methodologies are in place to increase the profit, profitability and, and in anticipating unpredictable risks. 
There's no assurance given in, this me in the way that Vodacom deals with these risks or regarding the effectiveness of the risk management policies that Vodacom has in place. When moving on to the third principle, the audit committee, the board should ensure that the company has an effective and independent audit committee. In our case, or in Vodacom's case, as actually, it is not. It, it constitutes a non-compliance as the board, as the audit committee, is not independent. It is also joined with the risk and the compliance committee. And furthermore, there is no mention as to how many times the audit committee meets during the year, or how many times it meets with the external or the internal uh, auditors. The Vodacom audits, Vodacom's audit committee should also satisfy the expertise, resources, and the experience of its finance function. In the integrated report, there is no indication that there has been compliance and therefore it constitutes a breach. And the audit committee should also ensure that the chief audit executive is present in the entire audit process. In Vodacom, there is no chief audit executive that has been appointed or has been assigned this specific role and is therefore also non-compliance. And lastly, the audit committee should adopt a charter that sets out its responsibilities as it is set out in Vodacom and there is currently no such charter in place and is therefore non-compliance in terms of the King 3 responsibilities. Then moving on to the final point, there is full compliance in terms of shareholder relationships and it appears that Vodacom actually has a very good relationship with all of its stakeholders and it is completely committed to having an inclusive and very thorough process in this regard. Thank you very much for listening to our, pro for, to our presentation and please find the report attached and I hope you have a lovely day.